How's it going folks? My name is Ty, it's CB Coffee Project. Today we're going to be pulling some shots of espresso on the Lilit Bianca. Today for the coffee we have a Colombian, it's a carbonic maceration, orange bourbon variety from Weathered Hands Farmhouse Coffee. It's growing at around 1600 feet meters. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so today we're going to be working with a 20 gram dose. I already have my coffee ground up. I'm going to be using a homemade filter at the bottom of my porta filter. I'm just going to run some water over that. So this is what it should look like after you have that uh, filter in there. We're going to go ahead and dose our coffee grounds in here. Like I said, this is a 20 gram dose that we're putting in here. Clean that. And then I'm going to put my funnel on and WDT. This is the uh, Jim Makes WDT. I think last I checked, it's a whole $7. And you can be part of the Cool Coffee Club when you get one. The greater good special. I've been pulling shots with this coffee for about four days, I think four days now. And the common theme that I've noticed with this, on espresso at least, is how bitter it is. And it's bitter in taste, not texture. And this isn't like bitter, like dark rose college campfire bitter. This is a, it's a really unique bitter. It's, it's the bitter that you'd get from ordering a drink with uh, orange peel in it. That's, that's the first thing that comes to mind whenever I drink this shot, is this tastes like a very bitter orange peel um, with about a medium sweetness. It's not super, super candy sweet. It's just kind of a medium sweetness, but that, that bitter orange peel is, so there. And I'm really curious for us to try this on uh, drip because those tasting notes don't align at all with uh, the roaster. So hopefully we'll see some tasting notes that align a little bit more um, with what the roaster's saying. In any case, this is one of the most unique coffees that I have tried in a while. It's not... Um, it's not a espresso that you're going to pull a shot and be like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. I taste this, that, and the other. It's going to be like, what did I just drink? Like, this is crazy. So if you want a memorable experience with at least drinking espresso, this coffee will do it for you. All right, folks, it's day five with this coffee and I'm grinding this coffee in the JX Pro for Avery so that she can drink her cap. If you want to see a review of this grinder, let me know. I'm uh, planning on it in the future, so be sure to subscribe. So today I'm using agave nectar. I don't usually use this, but it's what we had. I found that my favorite um, amount <laughs> of sweetness I guess is like right at 6 grams and it's in this little 6 ounce cappuccino cup 
so that's fine. This will work. Anyways, this isn't a very sweet drink. This is just like subtle sweetness to kind of add some depth to my coffee. I'm not a fan of just, I don't know, a milk and espresso drink. It's just a little boring for me like to add a little something. Um, okay, so I already uh, ground up the coffee for me here. And basically, I like to use um, this 18 gram basket. He likes to use the bigger one, the 25 gram, but for what I'm doing, I prefer this one. I don't like my cappuccinos to be super um, punchy, pungent, coffee tasting. I like for them to be a bit more delicate. So this just, I don't know, the ratio works and that's why I do it. Um, and this basket is the basket that came with the machine. Yeah, this is just the It's the like a basket or whatever. Non-straight walled basket. It's still, uh, Bianca uses IMS baskets. So I keep it like almost entirely turn this way and I try to not let my pressure go above six bars. It's gonna shoot up at first, but if I can bring it back down in the first 15, 20 seconds, that's ideal. So um, we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. So you're starting out with it closed. Starting out with it pretty so low. So it's probably like half a gram per second is being dispensed or something. See that pressure go up? Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna cut it off. It's gonna shoot up. And I'm gonna wait for this pressure to drop and then I'm gonna kind of baby this here and try to keep it right at six bars. My yield here, I'm aiming for about 32 to 34 grams out. That's kind of in the range that I enjoy in my cap. Now, we don't really pay attention to time that much because we always forget yeah. to check the time, but this was a 71 second shot. Yeah, don't be scared of time. Everyone tries to tell you that time is a scary thing in espresso, but it's really not. Yeah. You just do what takes It depends on, you. it honestly just depends on what your machine dispenses out right. per second. Okay. So I'm going to grab a little spoon and give this a stir. And I'm gonna be doing oat milk today, so I'm gonna grab that too. We'll talk about my favorite oat milk that I use. Okay, so I'm about to try this cap. I'm hoping that it'll taste how it did the other day. It tastes oh. like what? Just, you should try it first and then tell them what the other day tasted like. Okay. Just so we're not like. Okay, let's try this. Cause this one can be di completely different. This one's got a different uh, sweetener. Okay. So normally Avery uses a, um, a caramel. Yeah, normally I use caramel. It's not bad. It's not as good as it was the other day. Okay. Um, How do you think this coffee tastes as a milk drink? Like in a milk drink in general? It hasn't been my favorite. Okay. It is really good. Um, if you don't want your coffee to really shine through the milk too much and you kind of just want to like have something that blends well. This is a really nice coffee, but I wouldn't say there's anything special about it in a milk drink. However, the other day, I don't know if it was just a fluke <laughs> deal, but I had a cap that I made that tasted like coconut shavings. I don't know what it was. I don't know what I did differently, but it was phenomenal. This kind of just tastes like a normal cap that I would make. Nothing super special. It's not like this phenomenal, amazing cap. Um, but it's good. It's very drinkable. It's pretty gentle actually today. Um, I was slightly nervous because yesterday it was way too pungent, way too, um, I don't know, how would you describe it, how it was yesterday? Uh, I didn't, I didn't try your cap yesterday. No, you did. What? You I did? Yeah. I honestly do not even remember it. It wasn't very memorable. <laughs> okay, yeah, so there you go. I don't so remember it. I wouldn't say that this one is anything super special today. It was great the other day, but that might have just been a fluke deal on my end that I did something different that I didn't realize. It was a different recipe too. You were using that caramel. I was using caramel. Today I used agave. Um, agave is pretty strong in flavor. It is pretty strong, yeah. This isn't bad though. I'll definitely obviously drink it, um, but I think that in comparison to other caps that I've had with other coffees, this is not my favorite. Um, but it's it's still pretty good. There's nothing wrong with it. It just I like for something to kind of be unique and stand out in the cap to me. So. And guys, remember too that like when we're reviewing these coffees, for the most part, we'll try to be as consistent as possible. So for Avery, she really 
uh, likes to make uh, low flow shots. She likes to use that other um, uh, that other basket and things like that. Um, and she's going to do that with every okay, single coffee. Shoe. Okay, so we're going to do a clever dripper now. This is, in our opinion, basically the closest thing to cupping. Sounds like a French press or something. So. This is what we do, and it's also dead simple. That's our Belgian melon <laughs> Okay. All right, this water is at a boil. It's a 20 gram dose. And how much are... Uh... I'm, gonna, I'm doing 320 uh, grams of water. Okay. So it's a uh, one to 16. So it's just a dead simple recipe. It's just super easy. Um, trying to eliminate as many variables as possible so that y'all can replicate this from home. Oh, you don't have a fancy kettle? You don't have a kettle at all? Okay, great, boil some water. You can do the same thing that I'm doing. That's why we're using boiling water. Not because I think it'll be the best, but because it's the easiest. Okay. There we go. For some reason my timer freaked out, but that's okay, we're going with it. Well, I have the time here on the... Oh, okay, great. Okay, so we just did that. I'm not going to stir it or anything. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to break this crust. I'm just barely inserting this chopstick in here. You can use a spoon. I don't care. Um, I don't think it makes a difference. I just want to break this. You can also wiggle it too if you crust. wanted. Yes, you can. And that'll create a lot of it to sink too. Mm -hmm. The only reason why I haven't been doing that lately is because that's wiggling everything at the bottom too, which could theoretically increase the extraction. So with this, I'm like, I'm barely messing with anything, so. Well, what's the point of breaking the crust? Theoretically, I don't know how important it is, but theoretically, those are coffee grounds that aren't helping with the extraction. They're just kind of sitting there dormant. They're not getting the same amount of extraction as all the coffee grounds that are underneath the water. Mm -hmm. At least that's the theory. So there are people who disagree with that, but that's what we're doing. Most people will want to stir their clever or break the crust or whatever. So that's what we're doing for the sake of consistency and ease of use. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll wait about four minutes. Yeah, we're gonna do four minute brew time. Uh, lower brew times mean that you're gonna have to grind finer mm -hmm. and that's questionable. We kind of like using coarse grounds for um, for the clever. So that's what we're going to do. Last thing too is I can't give you an exact, um, uh, the exact grind size that I've used for the JX Pro because your zero could be different from my zero. But generally speaking for the clever, we generally are around the, what we call 25 tip range. So you'll want to go around two times, two and a half times two and a half revolutions for the uh, dial is is what we're at here. Mm -hmm. And that's usually where we're at in the past too. And are you looking for any specific drawdown time whenever we start that or not? I honestly don't care at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, if it takes like an abnormally long amount of time, I don't even care if it's fast. So it, unless it takes an abnormally long amount of time, I don't really care. We will look at the bed and see what the bed looks like. That'll kind of give us an idea. Mm -hmm. um, I do care a little bit more about that. But have about 15 seconds. Have about way. 15 seconds left yep. for four minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet. Okay. So, and then I've got my Hario. This is kind of a small, kind of a small one. This is definitely like a single, like a single uh, cup of coffee, but it's okay. I'm kind of sensitive to drip coffee. So there you go. Look at that. So the drawdown time is always super fast. It kind when of you like, start out. yeah, it kind of trickles at the end. It gets a little slower, right? Yes, it'll definitely get a lot slower. And because of the way that I was uh, pouring my water, I should have a even bed, despite even having to shake. Um, you know, wiggle the weather, the clever dripper, or anything like that, I'll still have a semi-even bed. 
But yeah, bed looks good, decently even. I actually think that grind size looks good. I don't like when it looks muddy, and that doesn't look muddy. Yeah. So that's great. We're gonna let this cool off just a little bit. Hopefully we'll get a little bit more sweetness out of it too. So I'll see you in a minute. I don't need a lot of coffee. Thank you. Yeah. All right. It's gonna be way too hot for me. I already know. Like steam's coming off. We're gonna try it. All right, here we go. I'm all scared. It's actually really good. This kind of brings me back to, um, this kind of brings me back to when I first started like trying like really good quality coffee and it's like so acidic and so fruity and um this tastes uh, juicy to me mm -hmm. uh juicy as in like a juicy fruit um uh, not the gum uh and it's just kind of like mind-boggling it's like you're it's borderline like you're drinking juice um so yeah that's first thing that came to my mind is like going to the first coffee shops that served a really, really good, high quality coffee that wasn't uh, burnt, and just being like, whoa, this is what coffee can taste like? That's the first thing that came to my mind. Just a little nostalgia. There's, believe it or not, there is a fair amount of acidity in this cup. Something that is not very present in uh, espresso. So if you like some acidity, it's got some nice, you know, moderate acidity, something that is borderline non-existent with the espresso. Okay, I'm excited because Avery's good at um, figuring out what she's tasting. Okay, so I already words. tried it, but I'm going to try it again. Um, yeah. Okay. I definitely get the juiciness of this. It's not super sweet, but it has a kind of natural tasting bitterness. I really taste like blood orange. This tastes like a juicy blood orange to me. It kind of has that bitterness. If you've had blood orange, you know that it's not a very sweet fruit. It's actually more on the bitter side, but not in a bad way at all. It's kind of just like um, maybe grapefruity, you know, it's like maybe you would want to put a little sugar on there, but no, this is so good. It's, it is very juicy. Um, what I say, what I mean by that is there's like there's zero astringency in this. It doesn't leave that dry texture mm -hmm. in your mouth. It's just, it's quenching tasting, you know? I think that's a great way of putting it. So if you like, um, if you like drip coffee, you like pour overs, stuff like this, this is going to be an incredibly refreshing coffee, yeah. in my opinion. Again, it's like medium sweetness. I mean, it's pretty sweet. It's mm -hmm. not candy sweet. Um, just very uh, juicy, fruity. Um, and it, so, I this would say that this brew was a, it was dialed in, in my opinion, yeah. and it still has that bitterness. I think that that is an attribute of this coffee, right. having this when taste we say and bitterness, bitterness. We mean it in an absolute positive way. Like I said, like grapefruity, blood orange, that kind of natural bitterness that it just reminds you of a fruit bitterness. It's not a, um, you know, it's not the way that we prepared it, it's not the way that it was roasted. I genuinely just think that it's how this coffee is. And it's absolutely wonderful. I like this coffee on um, Pour Over the Best or whatever. Clever. Absolutely. Yeah, this is where it has shone or shined. I don't know. This is where it has, has shined the most. Um, it was good on espresso, but not anything mind blowing. It was mediocre in my cap, but this is phenomenal. I could drink this every day. Okay, so I pulled up the coffee on. Um, the website on Weatherhand's website, and I just want to kind of review uh, Roasters Tasting Notes, see how accurate um, we feel like that is. Um, did we experience something different? Um, are we interpreting stuff differently? So his tasting notes are uh, fruit punch, pomegranate, and cherry. Hmm. I feel like I don't get any of that personally. Maybe. Um, 
Maybe the juiciness of fruit punch, I feel like that's maybe a descriptor to describe the juiciness and maybe the level of sweetness. It's pretty interpretive, yeah. Yeah. Level of sweetness wise, I don't think that's accurate because this seems pretty medium sweetness. It's very, it's on the lower end if it's even medium sweetness. It's like a very mild sweet, um, kind of like a, I don't know, like that date syrup that we have where it's, uh -huh. it's not overly sweet, but it just kind of has that natural sweetness of a fruit. Um, like dried fruit sweetness, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, dried fruit sweetness. I like that. Yeah. And then we talked about pomegranate the other day because I was ranting and raving and I was saying, um, I was saying orange peel bitterness, orange peel bitterness. Yeah, I mean, um, I get the pomegranate because that could be how he's interpreting the bitterness. He, it reminds him of pomegranate and it also, you know, pomegranates when you bite down and then they have this explosive juiciness. So I, I totally get that too. Um, I don't, I think I taste more blood orange personally, um, but that's just me. It could just be my taste buds. And lastly, cherry. This is like hugely interpretive because you've got like sweet canned cherries, you've got black cherries True. and everything else, but cherries can be very bitter too. They can be, yeah. Uh, I guess, yeah, if I, if I tasted cherry, it would be like maybe more on the end of like a black cherry. I guess is what they're called, kind of the darker. I believe that's the better one, yeah. Yeah, the more darker cherry, um, where it's it's not like super, super sweet. It's more just a very subtle sweetness. Um, but I think personally, I, I can understand the pomegranate. I can understand like just very juicy coffee. And, um, you know, blood orange personally is what I taste, like blood orange or grapefruit. Um, but that's just me, and that's my experience, so. This is a phenomenal coffee though. Guys, if if y'all like coffee that is bitter in flavor, not in texture, yeah. um, it's going to be an experience on espresso Absolutely. and it's going to be your next daily driver, drinker <laughs> in the mornings for pour over, then this is definitely the coffee for you. Um, this has definitely brought back some memories. Yeah. and is just overall fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was gonna just say, go ahead and take your first sip. First sip. So good. 